Hey everybody, it's Wednesday Night Live! Woohoo! Siski Vital Medicine. Hey guys, we're back. It's been a week and it's incredible. There's been just a, a flurry of activity around the clinic. Um, uh, what a whirlwind and I'm having a great time and I'm glad that uh, we're able to um, have you back again this Wednesday night. I'm joined by Ron Vitel. Um, and tonight we're going to learn a little bit about Ron. But before we do, are there any announcements? Tomorrow night, 6.30 to 8, we've got Maria LaPuma doing yes. her uh, uh, Thursday night uh, he, uh, heel, uh, tapping circle. Cool. It's her modern tapping circle. So this is a, an opportunity to come together as a group and learn how to do emotional freedom technique right to help manage stress, uh, break through uh, obstacles, challenges, blocks you have in your life. So tomorrow night, 6.30 to 8, uh, here at the clinic with Maria LaPuma. Nice. And do we have Dr. Frieder tomorrow? I think we have Skin Clinic tomorrow yes. with Dr. Frieder. Mm -hmm. um, 12 to 5. I love the Skin Clinic. It is amazing and I've had experience and um, I'm always impressed with Dr. Frieder. So if you have a skin condition or a skin lesion that's bothering you and you don't feel like going under the knife, mm. check out Dr. Frieder's um, website or come by the clinic. Um, check out our, our webpage. We can have some information there posted for you. Or if you have questions right now, you can post some questions and um, we'll see if we can answer them to, we'll answer them to the best of our abilities. Mm -hmm. But tomorrow, Dr. Feeder will be, will be here and I'm excited to have him in the clinic. So we have lots of cool um, and exciting things going on here at Siski Vita Medicine all the time. <laughs> and I really appreciate all of you and, and thank you for tuning in last mm -hmm. week. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think it was fun. And um, so this week we're sort of sticking with the, uh, the theme of getting to know our practitioners. So, yes. so yes, Ron's yes. been here with us at Siski Vita Medicine here at our uh, 940 Ellendale Drive, Suite 102 location. <laughs> and um, mm -hmm. it's it's been a wonderful experience having you. But um, I don't know if a lot of people know you or understand what you do. And, and, and so maybe tonight would be a night that we could get to know you a little bit more. That would be great. Awesome. It was fun. Last week I got to interview Dr. Duncan. Yes. I got to learn a little more about him. And now this week we're... We're, we're, we're tuning into Ron. We're going to flip, flip roles here. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> um, so... So you do nutrition and lifestyle coaching here at Siskiyou, and I yep. and, and we talked a little bit about your new adventure um, last week, and and that is you're getting into heart math. Yes. Right. So yes. looking at heart rate variability, heart resonance, um, mm -hmm. which improves health outcomes, reduces all cause mortality, which are just fancy words for reducing your risk of chronic illness and yeah. death. Right? Exactly. Prolonging your life and extending. Extending your life and, and improving your wellness. Learning how to develop the uh, or uh, cultivating resiliency mm. against the stresses of life. Cultivating resiliency. Yes. Amazing. Yes. That is awesome. That okay. I, I, I'm excited. I'm super stoked to 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 start doing uh, uh, well. One, go through the training for heart math, and then start applying it here in the clinic in one on one as well as group dynamics. Yes. So we'll do. Uh, some heart coherence work here now. Heart coherence, maybe you have all the great, great <laughs> words. Um, always an inspiration, Ron, thank you. Um, so let's just start at the beginning. How did you get into health and nutrition? An inspired conversation. Really? Yes, yeah, so I Tell was- Tell us more. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> well, I was already, I was kind of moving in the direction of um, natural foods, herbs for medicine, I was, uh, really into the Grateful Dead when I was a teenager in boarding school and in college and that was a more natural lifestyle so I was already moving in that direction mm -hmm. and then when I was 20 or 21 I met a naturopathic physician mm. in New Jersey where I'm from and I had a two-hour conversation with him and after that conversation I knew I knew what why I was here okay I knew what I was here to do and I and so when I was 20 or 21, I began studying everything I possibly could in the realm of nutrition, alternative medicine, alternative lifestyle, mm -hmm. uh, healthy living, and, and that started my, my interest right there. And it was, wow. yeah, yeah. Do you remember the naturopath's name? I do. His name was Skip Forsell. Skip Forsell, huh? Yeah, Skip Forsell. He, he had an organization called HUG, Health Users Group. Health Users Group? Yep. And he started mentoring me, and... Um, 
just basically one-on-one -on -one teaching me what he knew. And uh, I was in South Carolina at the time, and then I started a little branch of a health users group where I was living, and I started actually teaching classes. I was Whoa. like 21 I, or 22. I love that acronym. Hug, I, I know. Hug, that right? is such a great acronym. Absolutely. I love finding acronyms that actually spell something meaningful mm -hmm. or just fun. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool. And and so you had, had actually um, uh, gone to Seattle, right? And interviewed at Bastyr University? I did. When I was 22, I took a year off of college. I did three years of university studying just general subjects. I I approached college from the old school philosophy is that it was designed to make you a well, a well rounded individual. I didn't really know what I wanted to do when I went to college, so I just took general studies classes. And um, so I did that for three years. Uh, and at this point, I knew I was really into health, nutrition, I wanted to be a naturopath. Mm -hmm. But I was in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, not the healthiest place in the world. And I took a month long road trip by myself and I went out to Bastyr University and interviewed with them when I was 22 years old to, to enter into their naturopathic program. So what year was that? 1995. So they, they must have been still in the elementary school. Yes, they in were. In Wallingford. Yes, they were. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. A little bit of history mm -hmm. here. It's fascinating that, um, you know, I went to Bastyr, graduated from Bastyr and knew that history, but to actually meet somebody and work with somebody who got to experience that is, is awesome. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. So, so your path to becoming a nutritionist started at, at with this uh, doctor, this naturopath. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. you interviewed interviewed at Bastier. Yep. Yeah. And then what what sort of happened after that? Where where did it lead you? Well, Bastier Bastier said, <laughs> it was, now I see it as like, oh, you're 22. Why don't you come back when you're older yes. and more mature? Yes. Uh, so they said, why don't you go back finish your bachelor's degree? And then, and then reapply. And so I went back, I, I went back to a uh, college in Myrtle Beach where I was, mm -hmm. um, but I realized uh, at that moment in my life, the sciences like chemistry, uh, and physics, I just, um, I couldn't grok at that moment in my life. So uh -huh. my, my other passion was spiritual pursuits. And uh, so I, I just started studying that. And uh, at university then I, I uh, um, stopped going to university and I traveled. Mm -hmm. And then moved to a, a rural area of Illinois with my wife at that time. And we had uh, two children and I was running a health food store. I was helping uh, manage a health food store. So I was, I was immersed in it every day of my life. I was immersed in health, nutrition, supplements, and mm -hmm. I, I had a real passion for it, and that I just started studying everything I could on sup on nutritional supplements and herbs. Wow! And um, and I decided it was time for me to go back and get finish my degree. Mm -hmm. And I was a member of a clinical nutrition organization called the International American Association of Clinical Nutritionists, the IAACN. And I went to their annual symposium and was talking to people there about you know who, who I was and what I'm doing and went to go back to school but the only universities where I lived uh, which I was about an hour outside of st. Louis uh, the only nutrition programs were dietetics programs uh -huh. which I knew I didn't want to do dietetics I did not want to be a diet yes <laughs> I wanted to learn about real nutrition sorry to any dietitians out there right but uh, for me I was I was I was you know I was young I was like 26 27 28 somewhere in that range yeah and um, and I was really gung-ho on alternative nutrition. Right. So while I was at this conference, somebody said, hey, uh, why don't you talk to this person who had just finished their PhD from a school called Union Institute and University. Mm -hmm. And they were in Cincinnati, Ohio. And this was 2001 was when I was at that conference. And so they were just at that time starting to pioneer some online programs. Mm -hmm. And I contacted them and I said, well, you know, I." To, struck up a conversation with the person in charge of that program. I sent him my transcripts. He said, well, you, you know, you need this many credits, core, you know, in, core credits for your program. We can do this. Why don't you pitch us a curriculum? You have to build your own curriculum. So I built my own curriculum. I, with the help of a nutritional biochemist I knew at that time, 
Uh, uh, I searched out all the top human nutrition programs around the country. Th- that's sort of a little bit of foreshadowing. I think we're going to get into that. Yeah, right? we are, that's aren't we? Yeah. yeah, it is. This is, it's really like, my, I, I can look back and see these little foreshadowing moments, like the health users group starting to teach classes uh-huh. when I was 21, 22. Really shouldn't, you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyway, so I created this curriculum and I pitched it to this uh, university and they said, Right on, we can do that. And then they mm-hmm. put me in contact with professors at universities all around the country. Wow. And then I co-created each one of my classes. I told each professor, this is what I want to get out of this. This is you know, where I'm going. And they worked with me. And so that's how I finished my degree in nutrition. Wow, what an opportunity. It was. It was, it was an amazing opportunity because I am not, I'm somebody who's not really satisfied with the current educational model. Mm-hmm. And um, right, one size really fit. fits all, right? Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I was not, I um, never have been, yeah. uh, you know, a little in bit that of a rebel. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've kind of been that one, you know, which one of these is not like the other. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that was always me. That's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, so you, you sort of went um, a circuitous route into nutrition, but you learned a little bit. I think you know you, you touched on dietitians and uh, dietitians and dietetics, and there's a lot of value in knowing how many calories are in a gram of carbohydrate, and mm-hmm. you know, and that and that sort of thing. But it sounds like you got to really delve into some some subjects that were you were passionate about. Yes. So so when you first started out as a nutritionist, can you talk a little bit about? where you were and where you are now and sort of the evolution of of that process? Yeah, yeah. So when I first started getting into nutrition, I was a vegetarian. I I became vegetarian. I went vegetarian for like eight or nine years. Really? Yes. That is incredible. Yes, so I was eight or nine years of vegetarian with off and on vegan. And what I began to notice is that it was like a bell curve. I was doing really well at first, Mm -hmm. felt great, a lot of energy. Then I plateaued over the years, and then all of a sudden I started sliding down the backside of the bell curve, mm-hmm. and I started feeling every time I ate I had mental uh, fogginess and fatigue, and um, I just didn't feel good. A lot of digestive upset, mm-hmm. and this biochemist I mentioned earlier said, "You know, Ron, you don't want to be too far to the right or too far to the left. You want to be somewhere in the middle, mm-hmm. and um, you should put some meat back in your diet." Mm-hmm. And so I, I was like, okay, this guy was a genius. This guy was literally, he was a genius. Yeah. And um, so I listened to him and I started, I put meat back in my diet. And I remember the first time I did, it was like, I was home again. Really? Like instantaneously, I was back in my body and went, okay, this is what's been missing. Right. So, wow. I, so I got introduced at that time, right around that same time, I got introduced to something called metabolic typing. Mm-hmm. And I went through their certification program, and I started eating a like a paleo diet before paleo was really was a thing. Was a thing. Yeah. Um, and nutritional anthropology was one of the classes that I took, which was probably the most eye-opening and direction-shifting class I took. Wow. And uh, because that allowed me to trace the evolution of the human diet really? from our from our paleolithic uh-huh. ancestors to the modern day. Wow. And I got to see how the agricultural revolution is probably the most has had the most dramatic impact on human health of any long term event. And was that because it reduced the number of foods or the variety of foods we were eating? That it increased uh, consumption of grains, which mm-hmm. were the last food to be introduced, which mm-hmm. we have a hard time digesting. Uh, so in, you have an increase of foods which were hard to tolerate. You have a decrease in diversity. Mm-hmm. And then also, being that the foods aren't wild and they're cultivated, they're pampered, so they lose nutritional value as oh, well. Yeah, right, so, right. That's a big deal. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't think about that. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, so I started to really promote, uh, well, not promote, but just, um, you know, aim more towards that kind of lifestyle, the, 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 the quote, You paleo. saw some value in the paleo. Approach. Yes, yeah. yeah. And um, it's not, there's nothing like personal experience. But there, no, there isn't. Yeah. No, because I can speak confidently, like this is my it experience. Changed, it changed your life, changed it sounds like. my life, yeah. absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. So, 
so my my approach to nutrition i mean from then um where i was vegetarian really vegan and and i was doing it for a variety of reasons which most people are doing it for ethical reasons mm -hmm. and spiritual reasons and um but then i started to study grass-fed free range and i started to meet farmers and i had moved all around at this point and, mm -hmm. and became a part of a real uh local food community uh -huh. and uh and so my direction shifted more and more local more and more uh um balanced in that you know don't be afraid of the animal fats don't be afraid of of animal proteins mm -hmm. making sure quality is of the utmost importance mm -hmm. you know so uh so that's that's a little bit how it shifted and and what's really funny is that when i graduated i didn't i didn't go into practice okay yeah well, so what did what you it? do with that with that degree I am I my passion at that time was always nutritional supplements. Wow. And herbs. Okay. Yeah. So, so you worked in the supplement industry and the herbal industry for quite a while, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So when I graduated, I immediately started sending resumes out to uh nutritional supplement companies. And I uh got an interview with a company called Mega Food, which is a hundred percent whole food nutritional supplement company, mm -hmm. to be a quote sales rep. And uh, where I would have traveled around and visited health food stores. And I spent four hours with the CEO of that company in the interview. And he said, if you could do anything with this company, what would you do? And I said, I would be your educator. And he mm -hmm. said, that's funny. That's what I want to hire you for. <laughs> so <laughs> so my, my first job out of college literally was as the national educator for one of the top supplement companies wow. in the country. Congrats. Yeah. Way to go. It was great. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, super exciting, and and that set a tone for me. So I think it has, because uh, you do education mostly here at, at Siskiyou, mm -hmm. and then we're we're introducing Siskiyou Vital Medicine University, SVMU. which Ron is going to be the, <laughs> the the cornerstone of that program. So, wow, your life is really, like I said, foreshadowing, right? Teaching mm -hmm. others, which is um, which is pretty pretty awesome, man. It's fun. Yeah. It's fun to, to look back in retrospect and see this real unfolding that, mm -hmm. like, if I, if, I was, if I could see into the future, I'd have been like, oh, well, I'm doing this now because that's what I'm going to do later. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Wow. It, it, there, there are things that happen in one's life that remind you that you're on the right path. Yes. That you're in the right moment and yes. on the right path. It sounds like you've had several of those moments that if something keeps reminding you, like, hey, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah, yeah, so and it's, it's 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 wonderful. I mean, I had the opportunity. It's you know when I was a national educator for Mega Food, I I worked with them several times. I was their national educator. Then they hired me uh, many years later as their director of education, where I created educational programs. Mm -hmm. I went from just teaching to actually creating, and. Um, you know, the first the first thing I ever did for them was they sent me off to a city to do a speech, to do a talk for radiologists, acupuncturists, oh, wow. uh, the nutritionist for uh, one of the top cardiologists in the nation at that time, uh, Mark Houston. And, uh, and I'd never given a, a, I'd never taken a public speaking class there. Like, here's the deep end of the pool, here you go. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I loved it, but I thrived in that's it, and cool. I loved it. So, that's really cool. So, I, yeah, I started teaching uh, people about the ins and outs of nutritional supplements. Mm -hmm. I eventually went on to work for another company called Biotics Research, which deals strictly with healthcare professionals, not mm -hmm. retail establishments, and I became a clinical consultant for them. Yeah. And yeah. they trained me in functional medicine mm -hmm. and biological medicine, and I started to teach other practitioners um, uh, how to use their products and how to, and I start to teach practitioners who are interested in incorporating nutritional medicine mm -hmm. into their practice. So I taught them how to do that. I, I think that's great in that you have the experience of teaching physicians on, on, um, nutritional concepts or functional medical, um, um, strategies and concepts around supplementation and nutrition. Right. right. So, right. so you, it sounds like you have a really um, rich um, knowledge and a foundation that is um, that you can draw upon to then teach the classes that you do teach. Yeah. But I'm sure I'm sure that can get all kind of heady, 
right? There's a lot of, you know, um, I want to say isms out there. Maybe mm -hmm. there's a lot, there are a lot of details that you can go into in diet and nutrition be, can become very monotonous. Yes. So how, when you teach, how do you sort of weed through the monotony or weed through all of those details? What do you find is the most important aspect when you when you teach a group or if someone were to, to think about coming into Siskiyou Vida Medicine University and they were like a little shy and maybe feeling a little overwhelmed by diet nutrition is there anything that you would say to them to encourage them to come in or what strategies that you use now with people to yeah change habits or or change the way they perceive food yeah so um, Lots of questions. In yeah, there. I know there's a lot in there, but I'll unpack it. Okay. So, you know, having uh, one worked with Mega Food and teaching uh, health food store employees mm -hmm. who are nutritionally savvy, um, but, at a, but they're at a different level uh, from, they're at a less technical level for the most part than a doctor. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was able to learn how to talk to, um, you know, to your average people who are working in health food stores. And mm -hmm. then I learned how to speak really technical to physicians mm -hmm. and, and dietitians and things like that. Um, so I, so I, I had lots of opportunities uh, in my teaching time to learn how to craft what I was saying to who I was speaking to. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you teach for years and years and years, day in, day out. You, uh, I started to... Um, be able to read a room and to be able to see uh, when when people are with me and when people aren't with me and then also how to distill the information down so that it's the most essential points mm -hmm. so learning what's important and what's not important and learning that you know knowing who you're talking to mm -hmm. yeah. that's that's Big the one. most important thing so so what I what I say to people then if somebody mm -hmm. who's like maybe a little hesitant to come in to mm -hmm. a class because oh maybe it's really heady is actually I'm gonna meet you where you're at mm -hmm. I'm really gonna meet the room where they're at and what I'd love to do is to talk at that level to meet people where they're at and then just raise it up a little bit and as I raise it up a little bit give a little more explanation to that and then keep raising it mm -hmm. up a little bit mm -hmm. and providing explanation so that you're you're building a foundation um, and then you can build on top of that and bring people along with you, mm -hmm. and so that everybody's uh, you know everybody is 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 on the bus together. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah that take. I'm sure it takes a lot of years to kind of dial that in and get that that down pat so that you know it seems effortless. At least it seems effortless effortless for you. I've taken uh, or been present for a couple of your classes, and I I, I think that um, if anybody's hesitant, you know, Ron just kind of puts everybody at ease. You seem to to um, have an answer for everybody. <laughs> I really think that's awesome. So yeah, um, I would say that also the really putting people at ease, yeah. my, my classes, I really strive to make them casual, mm -hmm. comfortable, relaxed. Mm -hmm. It's not a stuffy environment. Um, or you have to memorize a lot of facts. And right. Things, right. And I encourage dialogue. And I think mm -hmm. that's one of the big things is to say, well, if you got questions, ask them, and that will create dialogue in the group. And so it's more of a conversational teaching style. That's cool. That's cool. Um, so um, we have SVMU coming up, and we have a few other things that we've mentioned. So what is it now that you're sort of focusing on? And kind of where do you see your, your nutritional and lifestyle coaching um, taking you in the next few mm. months to a, a couple years from mm. now. Right. Wow. So it's the focus. Yeah. <laughs> Ron's the focus. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh, what's the focus? The focus is the focus is going to be um, a multifaceted approach to health. Mm -hmm. So that we're always taking into consideration the physical, the psychological, the emotional, and spiritual components of the individual. Okay. And um, and so, uh, what the goal will be is to walk people through various topics, uh, whether it be the cardiovascular system and the nature of the heart, mm -hmm. uh, or um, uh, uh, some 
some simple things like uh, adrenals and blood sugar regulation and liver function. And mm -hmm. so we're going to walk people through the physiology so they can gain a greater understanding of their physiology. But how that inner, how uh, our physiology and how it's functioning and how we're, what we're putting into it, mm -hmm. not just food wise, uh -huh. but what we're putting into it sensorily as well. And all the factors that can influence thought and emotion and how that can have an impact on the physiology and ways we can bring that all into balance. Mm. So mm -hmm. that's the focus. The focus is you're a whole human being and we're going to, to build uh, um, SVMU, Cisco Vital Medicine University, around that dynamism, that dynamic aspect of that we are mm -hmm. whole human beings. Yes. You know, one of the best things that, that I get to hear from from our members and, and patients that you see is that um, you've changed their perspective, right? It, mm -hmm. It's like you've given them a new lease on the way they they see and relate to food, mm -hmm. right? The way they mm -hmm. relate to their meals, the way they relate, they relate to their, their food selection. Um, and, and I find that um, very... Um, uh, what I want to say the word is essential and crucial because when you can change somebody's perspective it, it really mm -hmm. changes their course of their life you know and what I'm talking about is something that's gonna have a positive impact on them for a really long time it's like you gave you you showed you showed somebody how to fish versus giving them a fish yeah yeah right super crucial yeah totally the goal is empowerment here yeah Right? Uh, yeah. So I see my role as a role of empowerment. That I, uh, when people sit down with me, or even when I'm teaching, if we're sitting one on one or if we're in a group, everything I'm doing is I'm figuring out how can this information empower people. So when somebody sits down with me one on one, one of the things I realize is perception is everything. Mm -hmm. The way we perceive things um, is, is really at the top. It's like the first and foremost thing we, we need to be working with is mm -hmm. perception. And sometimes it's just these little shifts in perception. The way we talk to ourselves, the way we view something, the way we think about the food that's sitting in front of us, the health challenge we're dealing with, where, where we can find the lessons. Mm -hmm. So I, I have a belief that true healing, true healing comes when we learn the lesson of what it is we're dealing with. Mm. Curing is the relief of symptoms, the alleviation of symptoms. That's mm -hmm. great, mm -hmm. but everything has a lesson with it. And if we can shift the perception enough that a person can, can see what the lesson is and what they're dealing with, and they can learn that, now they're empowered. Absolutely. And they can look at, now they, rather than fighting against something, they're like, oh, this is what it's teaching me. Mm -hmm. And then when we get the lesson, we can let go mm. of the condition. That's brilliant. That's good. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so this this is kind of on, but maybe it's a little off topic. Uh huh. Um, and it it's sort of interesting to think about, and and that is, I w was listening to an individual speak, and they were talking about how we are filters, right? We filter our environment. We filter. We mm -hmm. like. To, to conceptualize that is fascinating right and we talk about we talk about perception and empowerment and for me to think about wow you know actually I am filtering I'm filtering air I'm filtering food mm -hmm. I'm filtering emotions mm -hmm. I'm filtering you know media all this stuff is going in and I'm processing that internally and it's right. coming out differently right right and as a waste product or a byproduct or an action or a thought, or a conversation I have, mm -hmm. but I, I don't know, I, I brought that up because I think it's food for thought, really, to mm -hmm. think about um, ourselves as filters of our environment. We are. Right? And, wow, that just, for me, that just changed the way I thought about, just about the human being, because I usually think of like, um, you know, our lungs filter the air, mm -hmm. right? Um, we have plants that filter the air, water that filters, we have organisms that filter water, you know, mm -hmm. we have things that literally are called filters, mm -hmm. right, that take things out, mm -hmm. but we are also filters, and, and it's important to think of ourselves, I think, as, as that. And, and, and we can get 
clogged up. Exactly. We can get clogged up with clogged the stuff we're filtering. Up. So we, that's why we have to be super uh, careful of what we allow in to um, into our eyes, into our ears, into our nose, which that you can't really control, but and into our mouth, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So those are all filters. And based on an individual's conditioning through their life, they create a filter. Right. That they view the world through. Right. They create a lens now. Now there's the perception. That's right. Yeah. And sometimes you just gotta like, you know, polish that that lens a little bit. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta back flush or backwash the filter, right? You gotta mm -hmm. you gotta uh, cl clean it out. Yeah. And so that makes me think of, you know, our cleanse that's coming up that's in April. Right. Right. So you guys, we're we're gonna have this cleanse coming up in April, and mm -hmm. and uh, if any of you are interested in that, please. You know, check our website out for more information regarding that. Or come uh, April 2nd to the Ashland Co-op from 6 to 8 to hear uh, um, me speak about detoxification. I'm doing a talk at the Ashland Co-op from 6 to 8, Monday, April 2nd. Mm -hmm. It's called Spring Cleaning for Your Whole Being, where I'll actually talk about all those components. Flushing the system. Flushing the system. Not just physically detoxing, but also mentally and emotionally detoxing as well. Awesome. And if you guys have never been to uh, the talk in Ashland, it's actually in the Ashland Co-op's, uh, Food Co-op's classroom. Yep. It's right uh, on Pioneer Street. Pioneer. Right yep. on. Well, it's it was awesome. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Thanks and for asking. I'm super happy that all of you get to know Ron a little bit more, get to know Ron as much as, as I know him. And um, we're out of time for this week, so... Um, it's raining right now. It's raining. It's springtime uh, in Medford, so um, lots of rain. So I'm I'm super happy about that. Um, if you guys have any questions for us, or if you have any health topics that are of interest to you, please post them to our Facebook page, or you can email us at admin at siskiyouvitalmedicine.com. Excellent. All right, guys. Thanks so much, everybody. See you in a week. See you in one week. Bye.